Hey kids, thanks for joining us this week. We pray each of you are enjoying your time learning about Jesus. Now let's remember, there are a couple things we need you to do. Be sure to thank your parents and give them a big hug for all they do. And share this video with a friend or your classmates. Now parents, stay tuned at the end of this video for some instructions on how to finish the lesson. Now who's ready to get started? Ahoy there, mateys! Are ye ready for a joke? Aye, aye! Tar she blows! This joke here be a knock-knock joke. Knock-knock. Who's there? A pirate that doesn't know how to use a cell phone. Check it out! <sighs> what a day. Who's this? Huh? Huh? Where's that coming from? Uh oh. Just walk away slowly. What is the Bible? The Bible is one book made up of 66 little books full of chapters and verses. Inside those books are stories, songs, poems, and dreams, and together they tell one big story, God's story. The Bible is the most treasured book full of God's words that tell the true story of His amazing love. From the beginning of time, God spoke the world into existence, creating everything that we see. God continued to speak through a family that He chose to show His love to the world. He spoke through the stories of the kings and told what was to come through prophets. When God's people rejected him, they were taken into exile and God stopped speaking to them for hundreds of years. That's where the Old Testament part of the Bible ends. The New Testament begins with God sending his son Jesus to earth to fix our friendship with him once and for all. In the Gospels is where we can read the good news of how Jesus' life, death, and resurrection changed everything. He made a way for us to be friends with God. Followers of Jesus started the church, which is how the good news of Jesus it spread all over the world. And at the end, God's story tells us about a future where Jesus will come back and make the world right again which is really a brand new beginning. When you look at everything that happened in the Bible, you will see that it is the story God wrote to show you how much he loves you. Yo, ho, away we go, away we go, with a yo, ho, ho. 
Hey Tyler, I can juggle two apples. Well, I can juggle three. Well, I can juggle four. Well, I can juggle five. Prove it. <laughs> wow, that was pretty impressive. Did you know there's something I've learned about apples recently? Oh yeah, what's that? Well, you know how in the picture of Adam and Eve from the Bible, Eve is usually holding an apple? Yeah, I've definitely seen that before. Well, it turns out the fruit that Adam and Eve ate wasn't necessarily an apple at all. It could have been anything, but experts believe it was a pomegranate. What? That's cool. The Bible is jam-packed with so many amazing stories just like that one. You may have heard the story of creation before, and you may think it's just a story about two people, Adam and Eve. No way. While Adam and Eve were part of God's story, that story isn't all about them. What? Tell me more. When the world was created, God the Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit were all together, and each one of them had a specific part in its creation. Teamwork makes the dream work. And to kick it all off, God spoke and created the world. And on the first day, He created light. Whoa! And then He created day and night by separating the light and the darkness. And on the second day, God created the sky. And on day three, God created dry land and plants. He gave the dry ground a name, land, and he gave the water a name, calling it sea. Guys, you get a name, you get a name, everybody gets a name. And on the fourth day, God created the sun, the moon, and the stars. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, God made you what you are. I like it. Thanks, it's the remix. And God kept creating things like fish and birds on day five. And on day six, he made the animals that live on land and people. Lions, tigers, humans, oh my! God named those first people he made, Adam and Eve, and they were all BFFs, everything was perfect. That was until a sneaky snake told Adam and Eve some lies and convinced them to disobey God. Skrrr, what? When Adam and Eve disobeyed, it really hurt their friendship with God, but God knew this was gonna happen. Right, because God knows everything. And he already had a plan to fix their friendship with him. Ooh, this story's getting good. And that's exactly what the Bible is. It's a true story that God wrote about how much he loves the people he made. And we can break it down like this. Not quite like that, oh. but like this. You see, there are two big parts to God's story, the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament tells the true stories of how God created everything and chose a special group of people to show his love to the world. Mm. It's full of songs and poems, wow. war stories, what? tales of giants, talking donkeys, <laughs> kings and queens. And in every book and every chapter, there are messages about the future when God would send the perfect person to fix people's friendship with him once and for all. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And the New Testament part of the Bible is when the person comes on the scene as a real life human. Sweet baby Jesus. <laughs> yep. The New Testament is full of eyewitness accounts that tell the story of how God sent Jesus, his very own son, to fix our friendship with him. And it also has stories of people who risk their lives to tell everyone this good news. God had a plan for people to know his love and experience friendship with him. And that's what the story of the Bible is all about. God spoke to create the world and he kept on speaking. He spoke to people who wrote down his words and turned them into books. Got it, God, I'll write it down, got it. All 66 books in the Old Testament and New Testament that God inspired people to write were all put together in what we now call the Bible. From beginning to end, the Bible is God's word to us, and every word of it is true, and all the stories inside of it actually happened thousands of years ago. Most of all, these things that happened in history are His story, God's story about everything He did to show us His love. Man, the Bible really is the best book ever. You got that right. Ah, God's word is God's story. God's word is God's story. <laughs> Repeat after me in your best parrot voice. Ah. <laughs> ah, God's word is God's story. <laughs> Everyone, get on your feet and sing along. Let's learn the books of the Bible! Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers and Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job and Psalms and Proverbs, Ecclesiastes,
T-S-T Song of Songs. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible because we love God's Word. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, and Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi, you did it! That's the Old Testament. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible because we love God's Word. You guys are doing great, but let's speed it up for the New Testament! Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts, and Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, and Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus, and Philemon. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible because we love God's Word. Let's keep going, everybody! Hebrews and James! Hebrews, James, 1st and 2nd Peter, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, Jude and Revelation. Oh yeah! We did it! That's the New Testament. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible. We're gonna learn the books of the Bible because we love God's Word. Now we know the books of the Bible. Now we know the books of the Bible. Now we know the books of the Bible because we love God's Word. Because we love God's Word. What do you see? What do you see? How to be a pirate. Today we find an eager young lad in hopes of becoming a pirate. Observe. First up, we must give him a pirate name. We'll call him Patches McMonkey. Excellent. Now, one duty every pirate must fulfill. Swabbing the deck. Next, our hopeful Hornswoggler will walk the plank. As you can see, being a pirate isn't easy. But what is easy? Finding things in the Bible. It may seem hard to find something in such a big book. Maybe you're wanting to find Psalm 119, 140. So first, you need to find the book of Psalms. If you don't know where that is, don't worry. Just turn to the beginning of your Bible and look for the table of contents. It will tell you what page the book you're looking for is on. Once you're there, the big numbers in the book tell you the chapter and the little numbers tell you the verses. Excellent! If you're looking for verses on a certain topic like animals, a lot of Bibles have an index at the back with a bunch of different topics, and it shows where God talks about those things in the Bible. But if you're not using a paper Bible and an app is more your speed, you can use the very helpful search tool to discover all the treasures the Bible has to offer. Arr, we found the treasure. God's word is like pure gold. And it goes like this. Your word to me, that's the Bible. Your servant, well, that's me, Captain Goldtooth. That's also you, me crew. It's like pure gold. I treasure what you say. Well, shiver me timbers. That verse can be found in Psalm 119. All right, me crew. Let's see if you can say it in your best pirate voice. Repeat after me, Captain Goldtooth. Your word to me, your servant, is like pure gold. I treasure what you say. Psalm 119, 140. 
Well, shiver me timbers! You'll have God's word buried in your heart in no time. All right, me crew, get up and dance like a pirate. questions you can ask. The first question is, what? What did we read in God's Word today? Did we read about A, Pirates of the Caribbean, B, Jesus walking on water, or C, creation and Adam and Eve? The answer is C. We read about how God spoke and created the world. He made two humans, Adam and Eve, and they listened to a snake and disobeyed God, which really messed up their friendship with him. The next question to ask when you read the Bible is, so what? Or in other words, why does this matter to me? Well, it's important for us to understand that God created everything we see. It's also important for us to know that just like Adam and Eve, we do wrong things that hurt our friendship with God. And the last question to ask yourself is, now what? Now, what do we do with what we've learned? Well, there are lots of things we can do. We can praise God for being so awesome and creating the world. We can tell God we're sorry for the wrong things we do that hurt our friendship with Him. And we can keep reading God's story to find out all the things He has done to fix our friendship with Him. And whenever you read the Bible, remember to ask yourself, what, so what, and now what? Now let's all bow our heads, close our eyes, and pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. We know that it's your story, and it's better than gold. As we read the Bible each day, show us more about who you are and how much you love us. You are the best, and we love you. Amen. In case you missed it, here's what you need to know. God's Word is God's story. Thanks for joining us today. Now you get to be your children's crew leader. The Bible tells us in Deuteronomy 6-7, teach God's word to your children when you're at home and when we go about our daily lives, when you go to bed and when you get up. So God is asking us to translate his truths to our kids. Start the conversation today. Now don't worry, we're here to help. Click on the link below this video to download the questions and activities. The best inheritance we can leave a child is to teach them about Jesus. We pray you have an amazing time teaching your children as the Holy Spirit moves through your family.